It is a company, it's a biotech, and it is a company that is uh, developing products to regenerate tissue after severe damage and disease. It's based on 27 patents that I have invented um, in this space. And um, so I do many things other than being a scientist. I'm old enough <laughs> uh, through many situations. And um, so my unique, the uniqueness of my career is that I navigate both the public and the private sectors in order to do my job. And I was listening this morning and I was really astounded that my path may be unique. And I'm almost embarrassed to confess that unlike many of you in this room, my professional career started very early on the right track, and I had an embarrassment of riches. I was born to an affluent, highly educated Chinese Spanish family in Cagayan de Oro City in Mindanao. And since I was 13, the Philippine government invested in my high school until I got my master's in genetics. And then the United States government followed by funding my PhD, my post PhD. My work during the Human Genome Project helped me start a company, and today is still very invested in Nelma Therapeutics, so it could get to patients. And so I'm almost embarrassed to say that, because of the, the level of struggle um, of how many of you, you know, started with very little to get to where you are today. That's not my story. I'm on the other spectrum. And so my journey is not a journey of confidence. It is a journey of compassion. How do I give back? I've been sheltered and cushioned and given you know, so many resources by two countries and families and friends. So how do I understand struggle with women and how do I help? And so I made my pitch around that. How do I help Filipinas who want to have careers in science and in medicine? Very long, very expensive, very difficult career if you want to do that. And this actually started before Ben Milurica said, I'm going to nominate you this year. I was early this year in the first Global Women's Health Leaders Forum. And I got to sit down and discuss with Africa Stewart, who is the director for Doctors Without Borders, whose life skill is that she said, I can have a jet prepared to live with medical supplies in any part of the world. <laughs> Nobody gets to say that. And then Dr. Pratima Varki, who is the president of the Mayo Clinic, 17 hospitals, headed by a woman who was raised by two parents from India. And looks like a supermodel, too. So, <laughs> and Linda Talley, who is the head of nursing in, in Children's National Hospital in Washington, D.C. So I sat, that's a photo, and I sat, and there are many women here. I'm used to being the only woman in the company of men. But I was shocked that in the company of women, I was still rare. I was the only Asian, and I was only the only Filipina. And that's not right <laughs> in terms of voices. So I designed my pitch so that someday Filipina global leaders will be making breakthrough contributions in science and medicine, especially for what I care the most and why I went to science and why I founded Nelma Therapeutics and to help those who need it most, underserved communities. Because I was overserved. <laughs> I was spoiled, basically. So I want to help that. And when you do that, because I've been a teacher for 40 years, 10 in the Philippines at the University of Los Banos, 30 in the, in the United States. So, so I'm very familiar with this problem. There is great inequality of access to academic and professional resources. I had an embarrassment of riches, but that is the exception. That's not the norm. And in the United States, where there are many uh, opportunities, Filipinas are at the bottom of science, technology, engineering, and math majors. They are 60% less likely to major in science among all Asian Americans in the United States. That gets worse because females are 46 less than male counterparts to choose science. And I have found that very often programs focus on the first thing, first resource for success, which is academic excellence, especially Asians. We focus a lot. But my career and the students that have mentored over 40 years told me that there are two other very important resources you have to give them. One is that experience in the private sector, very different. When you're in the comfort of academia, 
as opposed to you're in the real world building skills and solving problems that are very fluid and are not very easily defined sometimes. And then finally, and the, this morning convinced me, the third resource is you need a community because you will always want to have that sense of belonging and assimilation. And also because it's other people and other women who told me if I'm working too hard, I'm overthinking something or that I have destructive patterns. Very often you can't recognize that and you need a community to do that. So the theory of change is that I know this works because most of my inventions were built on expertise on what's called the extracellular matrix. So cells secrete what's called a, a, an ECM. It is sort of a sticky biological glue and it holds tissues together. That's why your organs are very different shapes. But what's important is that that ECM is not only important for normal function, when you get injured or when you're sick, your ability to recover is based on the quality of that extracellular matrix. It's your environment. And so my friend and I, who is a doctor and a public health expert, wrote a book talking about that, the importance of community in using the extracellular matrix as a metaphor. And so what I want to do is build an extracellular matrix for Filipinas so that master's, PhD, and MD students get to be supported. And this is a snapshot of the diverse, strong ECM that was built around me to build the career that I have today. So in this environment, I believe, having seen it many times, that graduates not just come out with academic excellence, but they come out healthier individuals, and they do not, um, and that despite having ambition, that they're not just confident, but they're compassionate. And you really need compassion modeled for you. You can read about it and you have assumptions about it. But compassion, really, you need to see it in people. Like I saw it today with many women. So then you become professionals that are competent, have integrity, or can lead. You can't do that just inside the walls of academia. You need the community to help you show that. And there's so many women leaders here today. So I'm very honored to be in your company today. So this will be in Tennessee and North Carolina because this is my strongest network. I can see the students um, and I have a lot of resources. So these are for Filipinas pursuing graduate degrees in life sciences and medicine. They can come from the Philippines or they can be first and second generation Philippine American immigrants. What I wanna do is the community I saw today I did not know anybody in this room. In fact, the woman who nominated me, I haven't met her. But we were together, so we got to know each other. I would like to add this authentic community into the matrix that I already have. And make it stronger, focus it on Filipinas, so that we can achieve the vision, you know, that there will be Filipina global leaders. And finally, because I don't get to show this to scientists, 70% of scientists are agnostic, atheist, and outright hostile to faith. So I want to end with this because what has fueled me and guided me is that is my Christian faith. And that when you do compassion, it needs to be grounded in something bigger than who we are in our communities. So I'm very privileged to be in the company of women, I believe, on this morning, share a lot of you know, your profession and your faith together. So thank you very much. I'm honored to be